going to record a few notes on maze. Um, so first of all, the introduction to maze. Maze belongs to the family Graminae. Um, we've encountered that already when we were looking at barley and grass, of course. Um, maize grows quite tall. In Ireland it can get up to three metres high. Um, mainly we grow it for maize silage here and there are some reasons for that which are going to come up in a later slide. Um, generally, just like when we were talking about other crops, the maize varieties that are chosen are chosen for their dry matter yield, their starch content, their resistance to lodging and things like that. Um, the varieties that we would use would be Justina, Beacon and Destiny. Now pollination in maize um, is unusual in that it is self-pollinating or at least it can be. So if you have a look up here at the top of the plant we have the male part of the plant and they're called the tassels and then further down along the stem you have the female part and that's called the silk and you can see why it's called the silk. Um, pollination then involves pollen falling from the male part up here down onto the female part down here. Um, that can also happen from one plant to another plant um, when the pollen travels on the wind. So it's not always self-pollinating, it can be cross-pollinating as well because the pollen is light enough to be transferred from one plant to another on the wind. Now um, the uses of maize. Well the biggest one in Ireland by far is for silage. Um, also the maize straw can be used for bedding for animals and then the grain can be used for human consumption. Uh, so you have your corn on the cob and your sweet corn. Now when we're talking about silage why do we use so much maize for silage? Um, well it has a much higher dry matter content than your grass silage even first cut grass silage. In fact, if you do one cut of maize silage, you will get more than you would get out of two cuts of grass. Um, so that's notable here from the table. You can see the grass, the dry matter yield in tonnes per hectare is eight tonnes per hectare, whereas in maize you can get 17 tonnes per hectare. And then when you look at the percentage dry matter, you can see that for grass it's 21%. That would be... Um, high enough for a uh, first cut and then your maize can get up to 30%. Now other positives for the maize because it has such a high dry matter content it produces hardly any effluent um, when you are storing silage and that means then you don't have the cost of disposing of the effluent so it has um, that as an added benefit that it is much cheaper because you don't have to be disposing of it of the effluent. Um, then it has been found because of the high dry matter content, because of the high starch content, um, that feeding maize will lead to great live weight gain in both your beef and your dairy cattle. So to summarise all of those advantages then, um, your advantages of maize silage would be a high dry matter content, a high yield, only one harvest needed, little effluent which means lower cost for disposal and high in protein and starch which means you have less need for concentrate when you're using it as animal feed. Right now let's look at cultivation. So maize requires what soil type? Well, it needs a warm soil and a well-drained soil. Um, it needs a fairly high pH, 6.5 to 7. A deep soil would be good for maize, and maize is actually good for the soil as well, in that its roots go down nice and deep, which has a good uh, effect on the structure of the soil. And when you put all of that together, you're looking at brown earths and sandy loams. Um, obviously, the addition of the bit of sand in your sandy loam there will give you good drainage. Um, and both of those would have your slightly higher pH. They're not acidic soil, soil types. Um, then when you go to look at climate, it needs a warmer, 
drier climate perhaps than we have in Ireland, but still it does relatively well here. Um, it'll only germinate once we get above 10 degrees Celsius. And that means that uh, if you look at typical sowing dates somewhere between late March and early May, depending on the weather here. Um, now, preparation of the seedbed then. Um, so you're going to have to plough the seed bed and rotivate it to get um, a nice texture in March and harrow it then to get a finer seed bed before you sow it. Um, most maize then is grown under plastic and I'll give you a list of the reasons for that in a little bit. Um, mainly though it's around the fact that it can be sown earlier. You can get in there in March, you're not waiting um, for a later sowing date in April. Um, because the plastic leads to a higher temperature which allows you to sow it earlier and it also gives a higher yield. Obviously enough if you're sowing it earlier then you have a longer growing season before harvest time and that means that you get a higher yield. Um, it's sown with a special seeder, a precision seeder, um, that sows the seed and applies the herbicide and lays the plastic all in one and there's a picture of one there. Now, so to look at the plastic again, just to summarise the advantages of the plastic, it keeps the soil temperature warm um, and we've already mentioned that maize needs that high temperature to germinate above 10 degrees Celsius, keeps the moisture in and keeps the weeds down as well. Um, Fertiliser requirements then. Um, maize can benefit from slurry and uh, artificial fertiliser. Um, if you are using slurry, you would uh, plough it in in March before sowing and then if it, it, it'll actually take quite a lot of slurry and then if you're using artificial fertiliser you will of course use that according to your requirements depending on your soil index. Um, now weeds, pests and diseases then some of these we've already studied when we we're looking at barley and oats and wheat um, in terms of weeds, the big one is nightshade, which we have a diagram or a picture, I should say, sorry, of nightshade over there on the right. Um, how can you prevent it? Well, if you use a herbicide um, before the um, before the maize even comes up, the pre-emergent herbicide, and after it comes up again, you could give another spray of herbicide. Um, then on to wireworms. I know we've already studied wireworms uh, in an earlier chapter. That would be the main pest that you'd be dealing with. Uh, in terms of fungal diseases, then you have your eye spot, and we've already mentioned that as well. So it's caused by a fungus. You'll see um, in the picture here, you can see the little brownie spots um, that are surrounded by um, a yellow patch on them. And uh, they get bigger and take over more of the leaf. And of course, then that will affect your yield. Um, then how can you prevent that? Well, you spray fungicide and you generally do that when the crop is about one metre in height. Um, harvesting maize then. So generally you're talking about harvesting in September. Um, if you can, sometimes it'll go into October, but if you've sown it under plastic, you have the benefit there of being able to harvest that bit earlier, maybe even late August. And that means you've uh, no worries about the weather when you're harvesting. Um, it's ripe when the leaf around the grain turns yellow, um, a, a real whitish yellow. And that means that you're getting a nice sweet cob at that stage. And the dry matter should be around 50 to 55 percent at harvest time. Uh, the yield, of course, will be different depending on whether you're under plastic or whether you did open sowing. Um, if you're under plastic, you could get up to 15 to 20 tonnes per hectare. Uh, whereas open sowing, um, being that little bit later, having a shorter growing season, you could be looking at 13 to 14 tonnes per hectare. Um, now, also, there's another benefit of being under plastic as well, in that you get a higher dry matter content and a higher percentage starch, um, which makes it very suitable for your fodder. Um, finally, storage of maize. So maize can be made into silage uh, just like you would for grass but in the case of maize you don't have to add any additives um, you can also store it as uh, bales 
and you'd have contractors who would do that for you. That is the end of maze.